What's the bucket for? So this bucket is very important. If the centipede gets away from me, what I'm gonna do, place it right over my head. Yes. And run screaming out of the room. Okay, what do I do? The red bucket. Yeah, don't get the red bucket. But what's in the red bucket? Moss. Oh. <laughs> As this little Vietnamese centipede. Oh boy. You know what we should do today? What? Feed this giant Peruvian centipede. There's a centipede in this thing? There is a giant centipede in here. So in this enclosure right here, I've got a Scolopendra gigantea, which is one of the largest centipede species on the planet. And I've got my tongs here for safety, a bucket here for safety as well, and even a snake hook, just in case things get a little wild. What? A snake hook? Yeah. Okay. Just in case. Yeah, Honestly, I'll probably use this more than I'll use these because I'm I, I don't really get too close to this guy. So uh, this is called the Peruvian giant centipede, and they are a really beautiful species of centipede from South America. But they can get upwards of uh, a foot long, 12 to 14 inches long. Holy this guy right here, I'd say it's probably about 10 inches long right now, maybe a little bigger than that. Let's see if I can get him up on the hook here. There we go. So centipedes are said to have 100 legs, but in reality, uh, they don't have 100 legs. They've got two legs per body segment, and they usually have about 30 body segments, so they usually have uh, about 60 legs or so. Come on. Come on. It's like, nope, I'm backing up. I want to hold on. Oh, holy balls. Or is this a big centipede or something? Mm-hmm. He's a little chunky. I hope he wants to eat. Because I, I I don't know what their sort of feeding schedule they've had him on down here. Tickle, tickle. Tickle, tickle. There we go. You don't want to reach out and hit the camera. <laughs> that would be the worst. Doing it. I'm, I've got it. Keep doing your thing. Oh. <laughs> Holy shit. Is this a hospital visit? Uh, yes. Yeah, this would be a hospital visit. It would be really nasty. So there are some people who will handle these um, and they'll habituate them to being handled and being touched. And what they'll do is they will um, feed the centipede. And while it's eating, after it's used its venom on its food, they'll scoop it up. So it's preoccupied, it's eating whatever insect they've fed to it or whatever prey item they've fed to it. And then uh, they're gonna have it sit and lay on them. And so it gets used to, the antenna are going, they're smelling the person, so they get used to the person. And uh, their mouth parts are busy, they've used most of their venom, so even if they do bite you, it's not usually a full envenomation uh, because they've used most of their venom on their food. But I'm not one of those people. <laughs> do you want it flat or you want it? How do you want it? I don't. I really don't. Try to uh, keep it like that. That's cool. Just be careful. I'm being careful. This is one thing that I don't take any liberties with. There you go. That's cool. It doesn't, it doesn't really like the snake hook very much because it doesn't have a good grip on it. I can imagine it doesn't. Oh, my balls. It's probably going to fall the minute it... You think you can hold on to that? As long as I don't shake it. Oh, my goodness. Oh, oh, oh. Don't do that. Don't do that. 
<laughs> can uh, are they like tarantulas where they could hurt themselves if they fall from a huge distance? No, these guys are actually like tanks. They it would take a lot to hurt a centipede. That's unfortunate. Oh, oh. Are you hungry? It's like, I'm going to climb on this. Don't climb on it. Eat it. It's drinking the fucking water. Are you kidding me? It doesn't have the other mandible in it, right? I can't tell. Uh, it oh, looks there like we go. I literally think it's just drinking the water off. Ah. This is what you want, right? It wanted to be on your tongs? Oh my lord. It's literally just like, I want to go back into my enclosure and then I want to drink some water. Let's take a look at this. Oh boy. So this is a Vietnamese giant centipede. Giant centipede. Which is a pretty big centipede compared to the centipedes that we have in the United States. Now compare it to the Peruvian giant centipede from South America. And you can see the Peruvian is two and a half times as big as this little Vietnamese centipede. Oh boy. That's been set up pizza throw. <laughs> what we got? Dude, we got some new merch and we got these awesome zip up hoodies. Check this out. Nerd right here. And then boom. Oh! Look at that. So you can let everybody know how creepy you are. It's true. And that you probably have reptiles or you watch our YouTube or follow us on Twitch or any of the awesome platforms that you guys follow us on, which we love. So you can go check out all of our new merch available on our website, NewEnglandReptileStore.com. What sizes do we have? All of them. All Up of to them. 2X. Yep. That's it. Kevin, what are you wearing? What's beep, that? Beep, beep. You're wearing sunglasses inside, which is always a cool move. Beep, 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 beep. <laughs> he's, he's trying to tell you to... I'm a zero fence. No. Okay. I'm Beaker. No. Uh, we got our new hoodies in. Yep. So I'm actually back. pretty excited about these. Cool, man. Uh, and then we, they, they, you know what I like about this? What? They got these pockets where... BAM! Rubber gloves! COVID-19, yo! You have a mouse? And I need another place for face masks. What about mouses? You put mice in your sweatshirt. That, that's very nice. Yeah, I'm okay, so I have a bad habit that I'll sometimes when I'm cleaning the rodents, I find like a nice, freshly deceased rodent. I'm like, I can't waste this. And I put it in my pocket. Yeah. You know you're a herper if you store dead rodents that you don't want to waste and you want to feed them to your monitors, your green tree monitors or whatever, and you put it in your pocket and then you forget about them. But anyways, I'm really actually, I like the new merch. Uh, the, the hats, I like the hats, I like I like all the stuff. So uh, it's embroidered too. So Ooh. I like that, and this one's screen printed. You getting this? My freaking three inch side step. Yeah, so you just, you just shimmied the whole way over there, huh? <laughs> I did. She's you... got quite the grip. <laughs> yeah, Hi. looks like she's got you. She does, a little bit. I have to be the tree for a moment. Hey, be the tree. <laughs> Why oh, is this too bright? Probably not a good time for me to be playing with us right now. <laughs> it's all good, dude. These rooms are yeah, very... Let me, let me shimmy some more. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what are you f***ing doing? I had to move a little bit more. Wait, are you... So... So I'm good. Are so, we good? Oh, yeah. Should I come inwards? Okay, you can come inwards. Yeah. Coming inwards. All right. So, this is a big female tiger head OGS retic that we suspect to be grabbing. So we're gonna do what's called palpating, which is basically just feeling for follicles. So as she's going back in, I'm basically just gonna apply a little bit of pressure and feel for some bumps. So I gotta let her get in a little bit more. Right now she's literally climbing me like a tree. Fact. So I am being the tree. So once she gets a little bit further in, I can start to apply a little bit, that little bit of pressure to feel. And basically I'm just feeling for the follicles. So I just feel a bunch of lumps. What a, should I flip out? So now she's at a point where, as she goes in, I can start to heal. 
Jill. Come on. I think she's stronger than you. Oh, for sure. No question about that. But I can feel for sure that she's got follicles. So she's probably getting close to an ovulation. So basically what I'm doing when I'm putting that pressure on there, she's going in her cage on her own. So that's the most important thing. But I can feel when I put that little bit of pressure in there, I can feel those follicles just feels like low bump, low bump, low bump, low bump. So she's probably close to uh, 30 millimeters. So she's getting close to that ovulation point, which is great. That's what we want to see. And uh, we've been breeding retics pretty heavily this year. So actually quite a few of the retics in this room are already grabbing. Um, and the way we can tell that, I'll show you. Uh, so basically we're just, we're looking at some monsters that they're going to be hugging the heat and they just look super swollen. Super swole? Yeah. So you can see going towards the tail end there, they just swell out. They're really big snakes. I'm going right below you. Okay. Yeah, he's coming in to... I gotta go home, so I'm trying to get shit done. That one almost killed Gianni, you see that? Yeah. Almost murdered him. Look at that. He didn't lose his glasses, though. So I actually found them. Yep. Good. Also check out behind you, Donnie. We were just messing with uh, Cupcake the other day. And you can actually see how swollen she is. Yeah. So... This is a really great sign that she's loaded with eggs right now. Is this a good time to take her out and mess around with her? I'm gonna go with no. Oh, okay, <laughs> just checking. This is this is definitely like one of those times where you know even sometimes your friendlier retics will start to get a little annoyed much faster because you know those those luteinizing hormones have gone through there, especially if they're like right about to ovulate. They're just they don't want to be messed with. Uh, they want to be breaking glass in the other rooms. Yeah. Um, but you know, so they'll start to buck their coils to get to basically tell you like, hey, dude, not in the mood, like back off. Um, and that's your initial sign of like, okay, something's going on. So you see that swelling, they get a little bit irritated when you're trying to mess with them. Those are all kind of like key signs that that animal's got follicles. Um, if you didn't necessarily see the ovulation, because it only happens during a short window of time, uh, then you may have missed that and now she's got eggs and she's really just like, bro, just leave me alone. I'm trying to get these things developed and out of my body. Just trying to get these things out of my body. Yeah. That's just trying to get them out. Just get them out. Sounds like a typical human pregnant lady. <laughs> what are you doing? I had to dry my hands. Using I don't you. like being touched. We know. It's okay. That's why we touch you. This is an anaconda. It's a man eater. It's oh, man look at it. That thing could be a human. Straight from that bitch Carol Baskins. Oh, God, yeah. <laughs> No, so this is one of our breeder male anacondas, so we're going to put him in one of the cages with a couple of females. He's like, stop, stop. So we're starting to pair up some anacondas now. Females are looking pretty swollen, which is great. Just like you. <gasps> yeah, we're, we're all huge here at Inland yeah. Reptile. It's we true. just can't stop working out. It's true. So, uh, so we're breeding anacondas. We're still breeding some retakes. We've got a bunch of gravid retakes. Uh, we're still breeding ball pythons. We are also still breeding mangrove snakes and monitor lizards. So it's shaping up to be a really uh, baby blast during 2020. The baby blast? Baby blast. It's like a... Cool. Yeah. Probably a cooler way to say that. <laughs> did you get that? Yeah. Oh, God damn it. Of course I did. I hope you didn't. Your whole little... No, your ninja move? He got it. Of course I did. We're going in. So G's using the pretzel technique. It's gotta be its decision. There you go. You just guide it. Good girl. So fluffy. So like, I don't wanna, I don't wanna hurt her feelings. Wow. So you're saying our retakes are snowflakes? Yeah. 